Hi, thanks for being here. I'm excited to talk to you today about the admin on demand offering for salesforce.com from WapDrive. My name is Malik and I'm the co-founder and CEO at WapDrive. I'm going to be talking to you today about how you can make your Salesforce system work for you harder, better, faster, and stronger while saving $25,000 in this year. But before I tell you about it, I'd love for you to hear from one of our customers, Urban Ladder. The person on the screen is Lalit Chandani, who's their head of technology. And Urban Ladder is one of the largest furniture retailers on the internet, and our favorite customers too. Urban Ladder tried and failed at building an in-house admin team to maintain and enhance their Salesforce system, people that they would have on their payroll. When this didn't work, they tried engaging full-time contractors to handle their salesforce.com admin. They then tried having their current team members take on the added responsibility of managing and enhancing the salesforce.com system. Now, all of these had some obvious problems which they faced. The first was slow turnaround times because there is a limited knowledge that one individual carries. They also had recurring attrition related issues which are knowledge transfer and continuity. And because this is a very high demand for talent industry, salesforce.com, you're constantly having to hire new people and this means very, very high recurring hiring costs. And put all of these together and you have the very unfortunate mix of a significant drop in efficiency of your team because there is a gap and a lag in your system which, uh, versus your business processes. Now, after Urban Ladder switched to WapDrive's admin on demand, in Lalit's own words, WapDrive's admin on demand has saved us a lot of time. It has brought down our cost. It has freed us from hiring related stress and has made our CRM more effective to use. Now this is for you if you are the decision maker, manager, CEO of your company who's looking to automate and streamline your sales and service operations on salesforce.com so you can increase your profits dramatically, but the CRM that you invested tons of money into is not yielding the promised results. This is for you if you're feeling frustrated because you've already spent a lot of money and now you're spending too much time on making Salesforce work for you. And you'd rather be spending this time and effort on other things that can be done uniquely by you. And I really like how Haruki Murakami, this author, a Japanese author, says, spend your money on the things that money can buy. Spend your time on the things that money can't buy. Now you may have tried a few things already. You might have tried hiring a full-time admin on the payroll and this usually doesn't work because it comes with some very obvious limitations. Limitation of knowledge of that individual, a clear lack of expertise on the product in your industry, on the ability of giving you a solution to a problem that you're facing, of going through unexpected overhead costs of things like infrastructure, training, certification of this individual, uh, the obvious inability to scale because you now have one person and if your workload were to suddenly increase for a few days, you're not going to be able to clone or get in a new person just for those few days. So you'll have to pace your work out to what one person can handle. And all of this is not your fault. It's an industry-wide problem that Salesforce.com admin face because they take time, like any of us do, to develop skills, to devel develop cross-industry experience, and very rarely do they have the backing of an entire team so that they can manage their workloads and solve business problems a little more quickly. So to summarize all of this for you, right? Like on the left side, you can see without admin on demand and to the right with admin on demand. One of the things that customers have seen happen very dramatically is a sharp increase of their Salesforce return on investment. They've also seen, surprise, surprise, a reduction in the total money spent a higher system usage and adoption, which means that their team's happier with their system, information's more fresh, is more available, and the team tends to stay, doesn't get frustrated, it is able to be successful at their work, and there's just a much lower attrition. A, l a much higher effectiveness of your CRM, which means your customers are going to be a lot happier, and they're going to have a much better experience with your company. 
and the amount of time spent on doing some of these back office mundane tasks dramatically reduce. Now having a well-managed Salesforce system can, can work a few wonders for you. Right? It can really drive up collaboration and outcomes within your team. So having a system where all of the information sits and conversation sits can have dramatic impact. I'll tell you a little bit more about it in the presentation today. Having a well-managed Salesforce system can give you a real time and a very true picture of your business at any point in time because you're not looking at dated or laggy information. This information can give you actionable insights, can, can lead you to take actions right then, which can help your business greatly. And this all causes for an, an excellent experience for your customers and your prospects. Your employees will have a fantastic experience and that automatically means so will their customers and so will every other stakeholder that they are interacting with. So to summarize, life without a great Salesforce admin is definitely not easy. Uh, hunting and retaining this talent can burn a lot of money and time for you. It's an implicit cost that you wouldn't otherwise have realized. Um, you don't realize how much of your time is getting distracted from the rest of your business because you're spending time on this. The frustration of having your business incorrectly mapped on the system can be really suffocating, especially when employees are having to experience one thing in real life, but the system doesn't reflect it. So they've got to maintain information differently on a system. Knowing that you're spending good money on a great tool, but getting a bad outcome can be just a really sad place to be in and you've got a whole load of data in your system, but you don't have the reports to show for it and nothing's in the place that you want it to be in. And there are a lot of delays you'll incur in onboarding and offboarding users to your system. And this puts your data, puts your employees at a grave risk. If it just takes you very long to onboard users onto a system and they're already working from day one at your company then there's going to be a lot of gap in what they actually put on the system and what they do in real life. And, and this can put your data at significant risk. Right, some implicit costs and explicit costs while hiring a Salesforce admin that you might not have realized. The average salary of a Salesforce admin is about $89,000 a year, which we picked for the average city in the US. Now to this, which is the explicit cost of $89,000, there's a four and a half thousand dollar average hiring cost. About 15 days of salary is what you'd incur as a hiring cost towards all these different things, background checks, medical tests, uh, screening, interview. You'd then have to train this person. you will either have to teach them everything on your system. You'd need them to learn a few things on Salesforce and that could be almost a month. And that's where about $9,000. Uh, now to this person, you'll have to give them a lot of benefits. You'll have to give them like, you know, healthcare, paid leaves, bonuses, uh, reimbursements, uh, retirement benefits, relocations, and all of this, I would say about 1500 to $3,000 a person. And eventually you'll also have to give them maybe sometimes up to a month's pay as a bonus to just retain them or a hike at the end of the year. And that's going to take your total cost up to $114,000 a year from what you thought was only $90,000. So suddenly you're spending this additional $25,000 that you don't even know where it's going. And I know our offering is really interesting because it's not only $25,000 lower than the $115,000, it's actually lower than the $89,000. So don't get left behind. I think there's tremendous value uh, that you can face and there's a big risk you have of your business falling behind the competition a new startup is being formed in a dorm room right now as we speak. Every one of your competitors is getting faster, better, and stronger, and you've got to act now. Right? Structure your tools better for sustained growth, manage your Salesforce system properly, and get your operations streamlined, and, and more than anything else, delight your customers and enable your employees to do this. Here's the truth. You can save money, time, and effort while enhancing customer experience using an expert on-demand team from Salesforce, from WebDrive on your Salesforce admin work.
companies tend to choose the old method. They tend to hire somebody in-house or bring in a contractor to handle this. And these are definitely more expensive than you realize. And these are not, these are badly equipped to scale with your business. The knowledge is limited to that of the individual who's actually working with you. They don't stick around and you've seen it, we've seen it. Attrition is a regular and a very, very real issue. And WebDrive are among the only Salesforce experts offering a flexible solution that's tailor-made to your business needs. Something that we call admin on demand. Let me tell you a little bit about WebDrive. Uh, we are, we've now served more than 100,000 man hours of service. We're three years old and in that we've served 61 customers. Our customer satisfaction rating is 9.7 out of 10. This is actually something that's measured and recorded by salesforce.com themselves. We're gold partners to Salesforce. Uh, our team is now 73 people in size and we've served 17 industry verticals and all of this while being a bootstrapped debt-free company. We turned gold partners in November 2019 and we're very, very close to turning platinum, which we think should happen fairly soon. And our CSAT is one of the highest in our industry. Here are some of our clients that we've served in the three years that we've been around. And here are some more of them. So we're gr growing at warp speed and we can definitely enable you to grow at warp speed too. So before we get into all of this, I want to tell you a little bit about the Salesforce ecosystem and just make you realize how it's a lot more than just a CRM and the reason that we bet so heavily on this technology for our own company. So Salesforce is a whole ecosystem of different applications, <coughs> excuse me, sales, service, marketing, where each of these different tools is an entire product offering of themselves and they very seamlessly integrate with each other. So you could be using Sales Cloud in your company today and extend this to offer service to your customers with having the service features enabled in a jiffy. You don't even have to wait, you don't have to integrate data, you don't have to integrate systems. All of your information is in the same place, your users are in the same place. But now you can start using the system to not only sell but also to service your clients. And very similarly goes to marketing, community, analytics, and the whole range of offerings that Salesforce has. And all of this in Salesforce is amazing because Salesforce is not just a product but it's also a platform a platform that allows you to build custom applications fairly easily that are not offered out of the back, out of the box from Salesforce. And with their Einstein offering, which is AI, the ability to integrate with IoT, their data management platform, the whole ecosystem is pretty fantastic. And very often I found that we don't, and I'm at a loss when customers ask me, what does Salesforce do? I'm at a loss for what to say. What I'm much more comfortable with is a customer telling me what problems they're facing anywhere in their business, and I can then tell them how they can use Salesforce to solve them. Salesforce has been rated one of the most innovative companies for 10 years in a row now. Uh, Forbes has been running this rating of the world's most innovative company, and of the last 10 years, they were first for nine years. They were second in one year where Tesla came in first. And for all the other, and in that year they were uh, second, but ahead every year of companies like Google, Facebook, uh, Palantir, Amazon. Salesforce is 100% cloud-based, uh, very often even credited for giving birth to the cloud and to the SaaS models. They've got pre-integrated everything in their system. So tomorrow if you want to set up some marketing automation, it's pre-integrated with your sales, it's pre-integrated with your service in ways that you're not even able to imagine unless you've actually seen it. And all of this has a really intuitive, very simple interface that you can use across devices, on your computers, on your phone, and even on your smartwatches. And they've got a whole ecosystem of apps that are built by independent software vendors, which will get installed onto your Salesforce system, just like how you would install apps on your Apple devices with the with the App Store or with your Android devices with the Play Store. and But these from Salesforce are enterprise business apps. And everything that needs to be done in Salesforce can be achieved first through the easier method of the simple point and click drag and drop, which we call configuration. And that's what mostly admins do. 
and everything that can't be done by the configuration can be coded. So there's really no limits to what you can achieve with your Salesforce system. Now getting started with using the Salesforce ecosystem effectively needs you to do a few things. And at least in our recommendation, the first place to start is take a really hard look at your existing workflows and processes that are followed in your business today. And there are a few questions that you need to ask yourself about this. The first one, once you've picked those few workflows and processes, the first one to ask is that, is this a manual process? Is this something that's not tool-based? Are we having to manually put in a lot of effort, fill up a form somewhere, create some spreadsheet, email this across to somebody, wait for a response? Um, is this whole process manual? Is the process slow and sluggish? Uh, if it's a process that's, that's got too many handoff points, it's something that is going to take forever to happen, uh, where you know that the most simple process takes your company a very long time to do. Or is this process vague and arbitrary to other employees? If a new employee were to join today, were they, would they be able to very quickly understand this process and then start following it? Or would it be arbitrary and they'd have to ask around some of the others before they can actually get to how to actually follow this process? Uh, this new employee, can they get their head around it and get off the ground running? Uh, what is being done by a person over here that should and could ideally be done automatically by a software system? Is your data for this price process lying in multiple disparate systems? Uh, do you have a consolidated view of all of this data? Are you able to quickly action upon all of this information that you have, however you put it together? What is the lag in the reports that you consume? Um, I've seen very often there are cases where reports come a week later, reports sometimes come 24 hours later, or reports come only at the end of the month. Like, why are these not real time? And take all of these questions and repeat it for every one of your business processes. And in, and in most cases, you'll find a very compelling reason to move these to salesforce.com if too many of your answers to these questions have been no. Now you can leverage a wide array of unique features on salesforce.com, a small list of which we've put up here. Service and sales automation, marketing automation, communities, bring your customers, bring your partners onto the same platform, the same CRM that you're using, give them access to the same data but limited to what they should be looking at. Integrate the system with multiple others using something like MuleSoft. Build custom apps for things that are not already on Salesforce for, for a recruitment, for a, for a HR onboarding, process for an accounts payable process, build custom apps in a really easy ecosystem in a very scalable, very, very powerful application. Now getting the best out of your Salesforce license, uh, we truly believe, and this is something we tell our customers all the time, just like humans use only 5% of the brain's power, you're probably using less than 5% of the features that your license has already bought you. There's a lot more that your license does, but you don't really use today and you don't even know about. So with no increase in your license cost, you can get a lot more out of Salesforce just from the get-go. An example of a few key features that you might be missing out on is an automatic AI-based lead scoring. Salesforce has got an incredible engine that they call Einstein that can look at a lot of activities, look at uh, the title of the people that you're speaking to, how frequently are you speaking to them, what kind of language has been in your interactions with them, um, how that company is doing in their industry and put all of this together and give you a very strong lead scoring so that your team can focus on the right leads that they can take through closure much earlier. Sales path is an incredible feature in Salesforce where you can define multiple steps to a sales within your company and in each step, put down all the different things that need to be done. Maybe you want to collect the employee count from of your client, of your prospect, at a very early stage in your conversation. Maybe you want to make sure that your salesperson has spoken to the client and asked what their budget is and whether that qualifies for the kind of work you want to do for them. Now, the sales part will make sure that all of these questions and all of these tasks are being done at the right stage of the sale so that you're not waiting till too late in the sales cycle to realize that you obviously qualified this deal wrong or you forgot to capture some information that wasn't even right. And your new employees will be able to figure out their way to make a sale much more easily if they were using something like SalesPath. 
advanced knowledge articles is pretty fantastic to handle customer queries, to be able to look up automatically internal knowledge that you've built as a company, to embed this into an answer to the customer, edit this on the fly, and to have a central repository of all the things that your team should be using to talk to your customers. This is a feature that a surprising number of people don't even use, but Salesforce has got incredibly easy reports that can be built. Uh, you just drag and drop fields, just like you built pivot tables in Microsoft Excel. You can build reports the same way. And the cool part about these reports is you can actually share them across your company. But every user, when they, when they fire up this report, they'll actually only see it populated by the information that they have access to and not the entire organization's information. So it's everyone looking at information in the same format, but limited to the data that they should be, they should be consuming. And one really nice part about these reports, and I think for the few, for the many at least who use the reports, very few actually use this event or trigger-based subscription to reports where if you were to subscribe to a report, so what happens very often is we're all going in and looking at these reports and consuming information from it. But if everything's fine, if everything's running hunky-dory, you should, you don't need to be looking at this report. And that's when you can set these reports up to say, well, if the average handling time of leads for a certain employee of mine has gone over 10 days, then send me a report showing me all the leads they are working on and how long that's taking to close. So you're only working on reports, so you're only consuming this information when there's actually something for you to do about it. And this subscription is a pretty fantastic feature to just reduce the cognitive overload that you're facing as a manager. Dynamic dashboards, I'll even show you some later, but uh, these dynamic dashboards, for them to be real time, for you to be able to see it from your phone at any point of time, is pretty magical. And to be able to drill down to the level of detail from a dashboard is a feature that can be game changing for your company for certain. And the sales forecasts that are going into these dashboards into your system can be collaborative. It isn't just a top down or a bottom up sales forecasting, but at every level of your organization, there can be collaboration that happens on defining these sales forecasts. And this list is almost endless. These are just a few of the things that I'm surprised how many people are not really using, but there is so much more that your system could be doing for you. Right. So one place for you to get started and to just learn what are the things that could be lacking is I'd recommend you visit our blog. Uh, we've got some uh, really useful information and resources on sales cloud, service cloud, marketing cloud, etc. So just go to wapdrivetech.in and look at our blog. Now increasing employee productivity and performance. Uh, as much as all of us understand the value of it, a surprisingly few number of us actually pay attention to it. And uh, let me tell you a few things about increasing the productivity of your employees and thus their performance. So collaboration, right? Uh, for an e-commerce company, there is a lot of internal communication required, for example, when they're adding new products to their catalog. All of these processes can be expedited and made smoother using Salesforce. Uh, we've done an implementation for an e-commerce company where all of their teams are talking to each other on salesforce.com, they're collaborating about the catalog, understanding what steps are left, uh, talking about the quality of the pictures, and eventually signing off from all the different angles on the pricing, on the pictures, on the serviceability of that seller uh, to take a product live on their site. Real-time visibility and dashboards, uh, having key data that you can look into at the same place, uh, all juxtaposed and all meshed into each other of how many unique visitors your site is having, the number of transactions that are happening online, uh, to understand the product interest by different geographical areas, uh, conversion rates by the different campaigns you're running, overall site visits. All of this can give you a much better direction for your business, and this data can be stored and presented using Salesforce reports and dashboards. A much faster, much more informed decision making because you're now able to track customers' product preferences, their interests and demands using Salesforce, and you can take faster informed decisions about what product you want to launch next in the market and automation to make sure that the ball doesn't drop, right? Too often we've had emails from a customer that our team forgot to respond to. Uh, you need timely reminders to reach out to your customers about products that are left in their cart, cross-channel product personalization, and just drawing out the whole customer marketing journey to ensure that you engage with your customer at a stage that 
that they are waiting to hear from you or that it's most impactful because this is what is going to give your business a very sustainable growth. And all of this can be managed and built really well using Salesforce Cloud. Now again, pushing up productivity and getting a better performance. Um, so selling is the only activity in your organization for generating sales revenue and has its impact on the effectiveness of the organization. Salesforce plays a dominant role in enhancing the sales revenue and has a direct link to the effectiveness of your whole organization. And most effective organizations are distinguished from less effective organizations based on their Salesforce characteristics and the sales team's performance. And this is information that we've looked up from a, Zohima, a Zoha Fatima article on the, in the Journal of Marketing. Now we all know that success is a team sport. Um, in businesses like yours and ours, no individual can succeed or fail by themselves and we, success always happens because of a team effort. And when your team has more seamless handoffs amongst themselves, better alignment, the results are bound to drastically improve. Having a 360 degree view of your customer enriches every single interaction that your team member or anyone in your team is going to have with the customer. And this is going to lead to a delightful customer experience because the customer will feel that, oh great, this person I'm talking to knows all about me. And being able to talk to a customer this nicely and this well will also make your employees feel very excited and very up, upbeat about their job. And while each person on your team doesn't necessarily want the entire top-down view of things, they will definitely want a very clear grip on their keyhole view of the world which could often be bottom up. Again, Zoha Fatima's article in the Journal of Marketing. With a well-maintained Salesforce system, there's also less monitoring of salespeople that needs to be done by your management. Uh, you're not necessarily nitpicking and talking to them and micromanaging them, micromanaging them on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, there's less managerial direction or effort uh, to direct salespeople and the use of objective measures or outcomes to evaluate and compensate the sales force makes everyone's lives much easier. This is not subjective and it doesn't feel like there's politics or games in your organization. Uh, salespeople are held accountable for their results and not how they achieve the results and there's an invisible hand of the marketplace which pressures salespeople to perform and guide their actions. And in this system, a salesperson is responsible for his performance, but he's free to select the method of achievement. I'll give you one of my favorite stories over here. Uh, there's an air conditioner salesman who's reaching the end of his quarter, and he's got a significant amount of his, of his targets still to achieve. Now, he's looking at a massive list of leads. He's looking at a huge market, and he's looking at this big shortfall in his sales. And he's just got very few days left, uh, 10 days left in the quarter, and he's got a number to hit. Now, how does he pick and choose the right leads to go after? Let's imagine a scenario where he is using Salesforce and their organization does their sales and service automation on Salesforce. So this sales guy will first look at all of the customers that are in his region and sort these by the customers that, are, that have bought for the highest value. Once he's got this list of customers sorted by the highest value, He'll then filter it to say which are the customers that have bought from us at least six months ago. Well, now his list is probably down to some 100 customers. From this 100 customers, he'll further filter this list and say, uh, he'll add a field and filter it by that to say how many customers have created the highest number of service tickets or uh, uh, requirements of new warranty of parts from us, uh, new products that needed to, uh, to be put in for the service. Now suddenly he's able to see 10 customers who've placed really large air conditioner orders at least six months before this, have placed, uh, have required a lot of service calls. And he can now call up these 10 customers and sell to them a service AMC, a maintenance contract that will help him achieve his numbers and at the same time solve his, their customers' needs. And uh, suddenly from the 10 days left and he hasn't achieved his numbers to he's got three days to go, and he's well surpassed his numbers, all because he was able to pick the right leads and offer them the right service from his company, which he knew the customer would need and would also get him a good amount of revenue. Now start optimizing your business ops, right? It's fairly simple. Some of the first few things you should do is set up a 360 degree view around everything. 
a 360 degree view around your customer, a 360 degree view around your vendor, a 360 degree view around your partner, your services, all of it. So you should be able to go look at a customer and understand everything around them. When's the last time we spoke to them? What are the things they're buying from, from us? What are the rates we're selling to them at? Uh, who are our competitors in the business? Get a Google News feed about what's in the customer, everything in one place. Enable and roll out dynamic dashboards. Let me show you what a dynamic dashboard looks like. For, uh, for sales, a dynamic dashboard is going to look something like this, where it's all these different charts, it's all these different speedometers, uh, graphs that are telling you how different parts of the business are performing right now, something that you can take and consolidate it in one view. Similarly, for a service dashboard, I'm gonna talk more about each of these in a little while, but again, for service, you should just know what the average customer satisfaction has been, how long you're taking to close a case, what type of cases are coming up, what channels are they coming from. Make all of these dashboards dynamic because that's what you want to know about your business to figure out where the problems are and where your solutions should be. You should start optimizing your business ops using a tool like Chatter. It's a no-brainer. It's probably one of the best collaboration tools that's out there in the market for the very simple reason that Chatter allows you to collaborate at the level of or at the context of a certain customer, uh, a proposal that you're submitting, a meeting, because what Chatter is allowing you to do is versus a medium like email where if one of your colleagues were to be emailing you, they'd say, hi, I'm writing to you about customer X. We've been talking to them about this opportunity, which is now in the final stages. They've now asked us for a proposal, which I've attached with this. And the question that I have for you is, and they then go to their question. Versus in Salesforce, using Chatter, you can go directly to the context of that proposal and chat in a very Facebook-like interface with everyone else on the team that's collaborating. And you can put down your comment, ask a question, uh, create a poll. So it will show up in the context of that proposal. And the moment someone's looking at it, they know that this proposal is for this opportunity, is for this uh, client, and they can build context very, very quickly. And Chatter is also the tool that will maintain your logs of the different activities, of different approvals, of sign-offs that have happened in a certain deal. Uh, it's one of the most amazing features of Salesforce somehow and very sadly uh, isn't used too much by people, but a big, game, a big game changer that most clients see is their ability to use Chatter effectively. Start using activity trackers, and again, this ties into Chatter, so every time someone makes a change in an opportunity, makes a change in a customer record, uh, this gets logged as another activity on uh, Chatter. But the same way, you can also start keeping a track of emails that were exchanged with the customer, of calls, of meetings. So in one timeline, you're able to see everything that happened with this customer, see when it happened, and this helps you ensure that there's a much higher engagement with each of your customers. Now, start consuming information in your company using a detailed sales report that may look like so. And this is a few pages, be prepared for it. Like This is just absolutely amazing if you can use this well. So reports that executives in your company could be looking at for sales analysis. So first is if you were to look at your sales pipeline by the sales rep, so which of your sales rep, uh, what's the size of pipeline that each of them are sitting on right now. Uh, being able to analyze your margin across months and to compare what's the average amount of the deals that you're closing versus the average margin that you're keeping on this deal. Uh, the ability to look at key opportunities that you have going on right now, uh, look at all of them for different sizes and know that what these key opportunities are adding up to so you know what your revenue could be. Looking at some of your uh, neglected accounts, so uh, accounts that haven't had activity since a fairly long amount of time, and thus you should step in and fix for that so you don't allow your competitors to come in. Uh, looking at average opportunity size that your company's been looking at across time, if suddenly the opportunities you are working on are much smaller, you're then going to realize that uh, in a couple of months the deals you'll close will be much smaller and that's going to cause you some financial issues. 
and sometimes a case like this which is very interesting where the add-on business has been much higher and the new business has been lower that clearly tells you your sales force your sales team has been concentrating more on talking to existing customers here but not too much to new customers looking at closed business by all your different sales reps knowing what the total is and what each of them have brought in for you uh, being able to look at competitors in different deals if you're maintaining a track of who's competing with you at each of these different opportunities you'll be able to analyze where are you seeing more of these com competitors and you can then further slice this information by region you can si slice it by customer size all of which to tell you that in what market segments which competitors have been giving you a run for your money uh, sales forecast, uh, being able to look at your pipeline, getting commits from your sales team and saying best case if everything were to close where you'd be, where the commit is, and you don't want the gap between this being too large and you want your sales team consistently matching the commit numbers. And the sales representatives could be looking at a bunch of information for their sales analysis too to make them effective at their jobs. Being able to go out to customers and talk a lot more effectively uh, so being able to look at their leads and all the different sources that these leads are coming from and how many leads they have in each one of those, their pipeline and how m and which pipeline right now is flooded for them. So where do they have too many of their leads waiting right now and which are the ones they need to concentrate on. A sales rep also wants to know what are their top accounts and have this constantly being put in front of their eyes so that they know they should not drop the ball on any of these and stay in touch with them. Looking at their activities, how many calls have they been making, how many emails are they sending out, how many meetings are they having, and just making sure they're at their A game, they're beating the numbers that they know they're capable of. And their forecast of what they think they're going to achieve in a month, how many open leads that they've got. And all of these are just some of the, the standard reports for sales analysis that a company could be using. And when one would go into more specifically what your company can be using, that'd be so much more that would make the executives as well as the reps in your team a lot more successful. And just like these sales dashboards, here are some examples of service dashboards. Um, again, just so fantastic to be able to analyze business uh, in the way that um, like th some of these reports do. So in a service business, it would be very interesting to be able to look at how each of your agents have been achieving different customer satisfaction scores and you'd be able to spot out if one of your agents was significantly underperforming and also if somebody was significantly overperforming. To keep a track of uh, what are the main cases that channels are getting created on and maybe you want to try to find a way to deflect the larger volume of cases to more automated uh, channels that don't really, that are not high cost for you. So having more channel, having more cases created on something like an email channel is all obviously better for you than more cases on a phone channel. An escalation rate to say how many cases are getting escalated and to analyze each of these saying why are these escalations happening and what could we have done to avoid it. Uh, the different priority of cases, you don't want to be in a scenario where you've got too many critical cases open for too long in your company. And being able to measure the response time that you're uh, doing for these cases across different channels because you want customers to have a fairly consistent experience and you don't want to be too laggy on some channels, but uh, very fast on some. And uh, being able to look at all of uh, the service cost you're incurring for different clients versus what value that account really is causing for you. So for example, on this sheet, um, a pretty fantastic account to have is something like the green fields that I'm running my cursor over. Very high account value, but fairly low service cost. And a really bad account to be working on is something like Ohana Inc. where you've got very low account value but you're incurring very, very high service cost. And uh, being able to uh, look at the different uh, channels that your cases are coming in from and agents are handling them. Again, these are just a few of the service reports that could be really useful for you to start using and you should also consider more data, more analysis that will make your team a lot more effective and you can start optimizing your business ops a lot better. Now it's important to start prioritizing business performance. Um, according to information, and this is a really sad piece of information I came across, uh, startup activity is actually seeing a bit of a deficit. 
Every year, there are 470,000 businesses closing down and only 400,000 new businesses opening up. That means there are 70,000 less businesses every year than there were in the previous year. But what is really causing the death of these organizations, right? It, it isn't the market's great, the world economy's been growing, everyone's doing well, but why are these companies shutting down? And the heart of this problem really lies in one issue, right? It's failure in business performance. Too often we prioritize other things, we realign goals, we say, oh, uh, we celebrate successes in areas that are not even important and we forget that business performance is king. It doesn't help to have a great CSAT score if your business performance is poor. It doesn't help to have incredibly happy employees but your business is failing. If your organization isn't performing to your expectations or your client expectations, then a very few other things are going to matter. And I'd like to say that a business is like a strong river current. If you aren't actively pushing forward, then you're automatically being carried downstream. And very often downstream in business is failure and obscurity. So a few more, let's go back to Urban Ladder, a few more things about them, right? Uh, like where, when we asked them what had been your earlier approach to solving these problems in the absence of admin on demand, um, they realized that, uh, that they were working with partners to have a full-time full person on their premises. And uh, they realized that if they did not have continuous projects for this person one after the other, uh, it's likely that they'll pick something that's not urgent or not required and this is not going to be aligned with their business process, and this is a fairly inefficient thing to do. Uh, the part of their business that was impacted the most was uh, the cost reduction to run their CRM solution, and their prioritization became much sharper when they started working with PopDrive on the admin on demand. And on one side, as much as they were saving cost, they were also able to prioritize a little better with us. We asked them if their ROI had been the same or different with both the approaches and uh, they said their ROI is significantly better because now they're only paying for what they're getting built and since the team is focused on achieving the planned items in a limited time frame, um, you kind of plan things in much more advance and your, priorita uh, your prioritization becomes a lot sharper and according to Urban Ladder, that's the reason why it's a lot more efficient. So all you really need to do is um, ensure you're getting the best out of your existing license in relation to your business requirements. Make sure all your processes are built with the customers and employees in mind, making sure that their experience, your customers and your employees, their experience is the best possible. Build features that automate painful and slow processes. Uh, don't waste human time on it. Don't waste human effort on it. Just automate all of these parts out as much as you can. Use Salesforce to measure and increase employee and business performance, not just to increase it, but it's important to also use Salesforce to measure this. And you can engage a full-time admin on demand from WebDrive to maintain and upgrade your Salesforce systems at the same pace as your business. So to summarize, you can give your company a direct saving of at least $25,000 in 12 months or less while also saving a lot more money through hours of time that you save and knowing that your business is doing as well as it can. The peace of mind that you'll have is actually worth many, many more dollars than just this 25,000 we spoke of. And now there are a few ways to achieve this outcome, right? Uh, you hire an in-house admin or a part-time contract admin to manage your Salesforce system. And, and our bet is that you might not like this option because you might not be best equipped to interview and qualify the right Salesforce admin. You don't really know what this person, the skills they need to have to be able to do your Salesforce admin well. You're going to spend hours of time looking for the right admin and then familiarizing them with your company and its needs. You're going to in incur overhead costs like infrastructure, wage hikes, bonuses, certifications. You're gonna hit a glass ceiling of knowledge and and you're going to be unable to scale easily without going back out there and hiring more admins. And your admin will not stay current with the industry, will not stay current with product advancements that need regular study and upscaling. Or option two is you could choose what drives admin on demand. We'll set up, maintain, and upgrade your Salesforce system for half the price and in one third the time. Again, 
this is for decision makers, managers, CEOs, who are looking to automate and streamline your sales and service operations on salesforce.com and you're struggling with hiring the right Salesforce admin, you're burning your time and money on hiring and retaining this admin, your business is being incorrectly mapped on the Salesforce system, you're not able to generate useful reports from the Salesforce system, and you're not able to scale easily without burning deep holes in your pockets. And there's a lot of delay in onboarding and offboarding users to your system, and this puts your data and employees at grave risk. Now, WarpDrive, we've served more than 60 clients, and they've all used us to achieve fantastic results. Uh, Vergis Cherian, uh, uh, another client of ours called Coworks, he was looking for a Salesforce expert to revamp their system and to tune their unique business requirements within three months. And he said the ability of WarpDrive to take a, a problem statement and convert it into technical requirements and release it in a manner that we require was pretty fantastic. And that was his favorite part of working with us. Now here's going to happen when you work with us, a few, a few things that you'll see. You're going to save at least $25,000 a year because our offering is at $4,000 a month and that comes to about 48,000, so $50,000 a year versus the, the 75 to $90,000 that you might be uh, paying to hire an admin. You're going to get your work done in one third the time you're going to pay half the cost versus the $90,000 to our $48,000. Your focus will shift entirely to your customers, employees, and your business, and not on maintaining your Salesforce tool. You're going to get very quick, effective turnarounds on the changes that you want on your Salesforce system. And you're going to get advice and suggestions from us on what you could do on your Salesforce system. Because we look at so many customers, we look at so many use cases, that once we understand you, once we understand your company, we're so well positioned to advise you on what you could be doing better on your system. You're going to finally get rid of all your attrition related worries and you're going to get a sense of continuity for the work that you do. Uh, your solutions will not be limited and constrained by the knowledge of that one individual, but instead it's going to be an entire team. And obviously there's a wisdom of the masses. There's going to be more people that are thinking about a solution for you and that just puts you at a much better place. You don't need to plan your work around vacation and leave schedules. Uh, you don't need to know that your employee is going on leave for a couple of weeks at a, at a certain time. There's always someone available for you whenever there's work. You can forget about your unnecessary overhead costs, like what you spend on your office space, bonuses, training, etc. And you get to go stress-free and not worry about the tactical work of running your system anymore. And you're instead going to focus on the strategic parts of it, the things that are very high value and a very high return for you. And this is what you get. Uh, you're gonna get the best out of your Salesforce license, much better ROI, you're already spending this money you're gonna get much, much better results out of it. Uh, you're gonna get much quicker, much more effective turnarounds that are going to allow you to streamline your business operations, have everything systematic, have everything maintained in one place, and not having to run all over the moment you have an exception. You're going to get a high quality and a certified assistance from us at your beck and call. Uh, this will allow you to scale and grow your business easily. And you get access to all of WarpDrive's accumulated team knowledge this will allow your Salesforce org to really work for you so you can stand out from your competition and how. And all of this while you're going to be in step with the latest technology out there. So the best thing to do and the next steps for you after this are to book a call, get started with us, just visit warpdrivetech.in slash admin on demand. And don't worry at all, we back everything that we do up with a guarantee. And that means if we don't deliver on our promises, and you aren't happy at the end of, your, of the first month, you get your money back, no questions asked. We're so certain you're gonna have a good time. We're willing to offer you a full refund, even if you've spent an entire month doing work for you. So thanks a lot for your time. I'm looking forward to talking to you soon, and please come over to warpdrivetech.in slash admin hyphen on hyphen demand and book a call with us. Thank you very much. Talk to you soon.